I had a chance to play the new game, Sea of Solitude, from Joe May Games in Berlin, which was published by Electronic Arts. This was part of their EA Originals initiative, and it's one of those smaller indie games that has, you know, some sad music, and it deals with some pretty heavy topics. In this case, it's mental health and depression. You deal with it in a very surreal kind of way. You play this young woman named Kay who is really grappling with some heavy stuff. The mechanics in this game all have to do with the fact that you're navigating through a giant sunken city and it's filled with supernatural type monsters, which are reflections of some of the ways that you feel about yourself and they also echo some of the relationships that you have had. You're trying to bring life to this gray, dark, drowned environment and you're trying to, you know, push the waters away, literally and figuratively, as you're working your way through the game, which I thought was really cool. I also like the dynamics of, you know, navigating on my little rickety uh, motorboat through the, the city confines, trying to find the safe ways to go and unlock the doors. And you have these little collectible items, which are, you know, pretty key and central to story-based action-adventure titles like this game is. You find these little messages in a bottle which relay and relate to the story as it's unfolding for you. It's, it's more of a mystery. You're trying to really understand why Kay is in this predicament. So you get these little bits of information that way. It's also reflected in a lot of the audio cues that you'll meet when you encounter monsters or enemies and stuff that you mostly have to avoid rather than fight. And you also let loose some seagulls. You let them go. You, you shoo them away and then they fly around and they give you a, a bird's eye view, a literal bird's eye view of the environment that you're going to traverse. Shoo! through the confines and the context of the game, you come face to face with some of the fears and inhibitions and self-doubts that this character has been carrying around. In terms of the, the context of what I played, what I was most impressed with were the visuals in this game, which are outstanding. The graphics are really lovely. The visuals are lovely. I love the character creations. I love the way that the city is rendered. It's not like super heavy texture details. It's not like when you walk through the uh, uh, the foliage in the game, it's all gonna move and it, this isn't uncharted, but there is this stylized painterly quality to the visuals in the title and they bring you in. They bring you into these worlds and into these characters and you want to know more there's a compelling kind of hook there that monster doesn't know me at all obviously i'm super impressed by the fact that we're dealing with mature topics like this in such an artistic and creative way and we're using the medium of video games to convey some pretty complex stories but about some complex issues that affect all of us and i think that that is wonderful and i think you know we have not been able to fully describe and fully utilize the potential of the video game medium yet. And it's steps like this, it's efforts like this that take us further. It's not just, you know, evolutions and iterations on products and, and game franchises that we love. It's when developers take risks like this that challenge our perception of what a video game is. The medium itself takes these really empowering steps forward. And for that, I applaud Sea of Solitude. I won't let them hurt you anymore, I promise. The thing that pulled me out of the game is that it, it, there wasn't enough game stuff to do, you know? you, you're, It's not a combat game, it's not really a conflict game, it's about outsmarting the potential of conflict and finding ways to ensnare the darkness and trap it rather than throw things at it or shoot it or stab it, you know, we get enough of that in other video games. The end effect of that is that I felt a little, it felt a little drawn out and a little dull in certain places, you know, like you have a set amount of mobility, you've got, you know, some jumping and stuff like that, but you're not able to clamber up and climb up onto things that much in certain specific spots you are. So you'll find yourself kind of getting stuck on the edges of the city walls and obstructions and stuff quite often and then trying to re-navigate to the one place that you can get through to get into the next area, which is fine. It just, it could have thrilled me more as a game itself. The game elements could have been a little bit more enticing. And I also thought that a lot of the mental health issues, as they were scripted and performed, felt very on the nose. There isn't a tremendous amount of subtlety. Like the performers and the actors and the pieces that we have between cast members in here feel articulated. And it feels like if humans were in situations like that and they were able to discuss the particular demons that are brought up within this game, they would be able to work some stuff out. But maybe it's a reflection of that. Maybe this is supposed to be a hypothetical set of situations where characters are actually talking the way that 
K would like them to have talked. That's what's cool about this game. It makes you pause, it makes you reflect, it makes you think about the symbolism, and it makes you think about its meaning and the weight of it. I want to help you. I enjoyed my time with this game. It pulled me through to the end. I definitely wandered off a little bit in my mind as I was playing it because it wasn't, you know, hooking me in with the game elements, but I sure appreciate the artistry of this and I applaud the creators for trying something different, something that is so vital and something that we need in our industry. I'm gonna give Sea of Solitude a seven out of 10.